So uh, our first keynote speaker talking about SME innovation support in uh, the horizon of Europe, Mr. Daniel Gassman. And uh, Daniel, whoa, he's, I love this title. I love long titles. It's my favorite. Head of Sector Innovation Ecosystems, EIC, Prizes and Procurement at the European Innovation Council and SME's Executive Agency. I only needed to take one breath in the middle of that. Okay, uh, Daniel, are you there, sir? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Lovely. Okay, so let's go. Thanks a lot, Luis. So uh, good morning, everyone. Dear partners, <clears throat> um, dear uh, people being interested in uh, outcomes of uh, such, uh, let's say in a certain way, super high-tech uh, project. Um, I also see that James uh, Phillips is around. So hi, James. And uh, I'm very, uh, very honored and pleased to be with you today. So uh, I, I cannot um, give more support in such type of events where uh, project results are shared. So this is really a, a great opportunity. So thanks a lot to Steinbeis for hosting this um, event. And uh, thanks a lot for all the partners having participated in the project. And indeed, it has been uh, said very briefly by Mr. Mion. Uh, what is also behind the scene here is that we are testing the randomized control trial approach uh, in innovation support services. And this is a way of measuring impact. And I think this is also on the, on the agenda today. Um, so I will give you some uh, hints about innovation trends from my perspective. And before that, I would spend some time in uh, explaining you quickly uh, the agency because this is something new. So if you can go to the next slide, please. Next one. And before starting, I just wanted to let you know that I understand that the, the slides will be shared. So uh, no problem, you, you will have access to them. So let's start with this first slide. This slide is uh, showing you the portfolio of the um, uh, European Innovation Executive, European Innovation Ex Council Executive Agency. Uh, and um, I think it's a good uh, illustration of our portfolio, which makes uh, a lot of sense. So you see on the, on the left, the big uh, chunk of the uh, European Innovation Council. So this is all what relates to um, accelerating or supporting SMEs, including in deep tech. So this is the big chunk of direct SME support. Um, and then you see on the, on the right-hand side, other programs. Uh, it's, I would say it's not institutionally perfectly clean in the sense that we are also part of the EIC for a part of the activities. So you see one unit dealing with uh, EU and place-based uh, innovation ecosystems and one unit dealing with the single market program. So if we go into a li little bit more of details, next slide, please. I won't go now in detail into the slide because this is not the purpose, but it's, I think it's good to remind the overview of the uh, heart of the innovation support we're providing directly, uh, which is the uh, European Innovation Council. And there you see the three main blocks, which is Pathfinder, Transition, and Accelerator, uh, which have all different purposes for different uh, levels of lev development. And I wanted to highlight uh, also the right-hand side, which is usually less known, uh, which is on one hand, the fact that this uh, uh, program is steered by a board with uh, leading uh, uh, people from uh, the private sector as well and from the public sector. And very, very important, the business acceleration services, which are helping to uh, interlink the results of the projects to uh, big corporates, to investors, to other ecosystems. And I think this is bringing at least as much value than the, the, the grant or equity. Um, and we are working now on connecting the, the, the ERC with uh, other initiatives. Next slide, please. So let's spend a little time on the single market program. Um, this is, a, of course, a very uh, important part of our agency, um, knowing that uh, we need these additional tools. If we have on one hand the big, uh, let's say, high-tech innovation part, we also have, thanks to the Cosmo program, the support to, let's say, all types of companies. And there we are operating essentially via the Enterprise Youth Network, a well-established network which is working very efficiently. 
And with Cosme, we are financing uh, other networks, uh, for instance, women entrepreneurs. Uh, we are financing studies, and very often these studies are a little bit underestimated, but they have a great value because uh, they are, can provide some market information to SMEs. Uh, and uh, we are also uh, supporting pan European platforms thanks to this program. Two other important parts, standardization, of course, very important for uh, international business development, and not to forget also the innovation dimension in standardization, which is absolutely essential for the first part of uh, uh, the uh, agency. And last but not least, of course, the consumers, because the consumers are the mirror of the obligations of the companies. So this, this is just for showing you that it's a very complete set of programs. Next slide, please. And now we come to the part I'm more involved, of course. So this uh, uh, is a unit which is uh, basing on three um, components. The first one is the European Innovation Ecosystems Work Program. So here we are usually operating directly uh, for business intermediaries, but sometimes there are also some uh, calls which are targeting SMEs. Then we are working on the InnoSub legacy, InnoSub stands for Innovation in SMEs. So this is a, a program uh, had, which had been led by the GCO. So now this program is finished. Uh, we've recently signed our very last um, grant in the area of advanced manufacturing. But uh, don't forget, there's still a lot of uh, third party calls which are open or which will be launched by our projects. So uh, here, this is a little tip for you intermediaries. Uh, please help us in passing the message to the SMEs and also to the SMEs present here. It's uh, uh, an interesting founding opportunities. The volumes are much slower, uh, much smaller than what you heard before. Nevertheless, um, you have access there to very good services and to high quality networks. So this is why I really encourage you to, to have an eye on these, what we call third party calls, which is essentially third party, uh, uh, which is cascade founding. We are providing a big check to intermediaries and then they are giving little tickets to companies. Then there's lots of uh, uh, results stemming from these programs, which uh, will be available soon. I'm, com I'm coming back to this later. And also another component, which is the Interregional Innovation Investments, which, stands, uh, which is uh, the long name for the I3 uh, program. And this is a new program, which is absolutely uh, essential uh, for you because it will give the means for you to work at a, 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 a regional level and say to connect with other peers. Next slide, please. So now about, about innovation trends. I mean, I'm not a, a professor. I'm not from the academia. So you hear, really hear some, uh, uh, let's say, very crude information. This is a, maybe a, a strong personal analysis of these trends. And before starting with our innovation trends, let's have a general look on EU trends. And uh, this is really uh, important to have a look at, look at it. Um, the Commission has released recently uh, the Strategic Foresight Report 2021. And maybe for once, I will stick to what is here on the slide. And you see that there are four main blocks we should take into account, climate change and other environmental challenges digital hyper-connectivity hyper and technical transformations, pressure on democratic models and uh, of governance and values, shifts in the global order in demography. So I think these are important elements we have to take into account. It's not only addressing public authorities, but it's concerning all of us. And what will be happening in Horizon Europe will for sure be partially translating these general trends. Next slide, please. This is also a part of this uh, strategic foresight report. And uh, what I want to highlight here is that you see that the share of the uh, European uh, market in the global um, uh, GDP is uh, shrinking. Okay, so that's uh, natural because that's the evolution of things and of, of, of history. Uh, nevertheless, what is important here is to keep in mind uh, the necessity of both innovation and international internationalization, because of course uh, the uh, these growing markets also offer lots of opportunities. So let me just highlight the importance of internationalization when it regards uh, SME strategy. Next slide, please. So about innovation trends, 
I have here a first slide, which is more, uh, uh, which are the innovation trends on the SME side. So uh, talking about SMEs, of course, I cannot uh, mention first the EIC, which is at the core of these activities. Uh, here, the, the trends are that we are now, since a couple of months, combining grants and equity. And this is a very interesting evolution. We are working very, very heavily on, in interconnecting uh, the EIC with other initiatives, especially the uh, European Innovation uh, uh, I mean, the, um, uh, the the kicks from the EIT, as well as uh, Startup Europe, uh, and we're working here on connecting this and providing an access to the fast track of the EIC, which means a quicker evaluation with a better qualification firsthand. There's also an increasing uh, consideration of deep tech, which is basically essentially to integrate uh, a strong deep tech dimension in the EIC. And as I said, the business acceleration services are enhanced, and this is providing a lot of value to the uh, uh, beneficiaries of this program. And of course, we have green and digital as priority, not to forget, of course, uh, urgent measures like uh, what is related to uh, health. On the size of the other programs, uh, so um, we are staying on COSME on more or less the same priorities with a strong new dimension, which is related to recovery. As I said, this is also the mirror part of uh, the left-hand side of the slide. We're now connecting on other programs in a structured way to the EIC. As I said, uh, still some uh, sub-granting actions. Uh, and I said, this is extremely important. And here, the main action for this is the InnoSoup 1 uh, new cluster facilitated value chains. So uh, keep an eye on this. And um, this is, I think, uh, things we're doing since a long while. We're making sure that uh, at least all essential services are covered by our people on the ground from the uh, enterprise group network. And in case there's some SMEs around not knowing this network, I can only invite you to get in touch. You will find there are lots of information about uh, your business development, in particular, what is related to internationalization, innovation management, IP, but can also be questions related to VAT or more administrative things. So don't uh, hesitate to connect with the EN. Now, if I'm more having more an eye on the on the on the innovation trends for intermediaries. <clears throat> I think, and you would have probably read this in our work program for the European innovation ecosystems. Uh, we are now working hard on better connecting the ecosystems around Europe. This is, of course, a super important uh, task. And I think uh, also we're doing this now because uh, I think the ecosystems at the regional level have reached a certain level of maturity, which makes that uh, these actions make a lot of sense. And uh, let me highlight here one of our, our first actions in the work program, which is um, to uh, prepare the different ecosystems in Europe to work together and to common actions in the perspective of going then later on on a co-found action, meaning we will find a part of it and you will find uh, another part of it. Very important as well, uh, we are now structuring much better the European layer with the regional layers of course, also with the national. My experience is it's really uh, it's very often easier to work at a regional level. Sometimes the national level is putting some burdens on this. So uh, we have now have, having a very strong focus on these both dimensions, uh, the European dimension and the regional dimension, knowing that, of course, we'll be working very closely with the member states in the framework of the uh, European Innovation Council Forum. Of course, very important as well is the integration or let's say the stronger participation of the regions into the S3 objectives. This is super important for creating very solid uh, value chains at European level. And if, in case you've heard our president Ursula van der Leyen recently for the State of the Union, um, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, at the core of our objectives uh, to have more solid value chains and also to have uh, to gain again a little bit of sovereignty. And so this is why it's very important to work on these S3 objectives. And of course, we are building on the results of the previous uh, programs. And there, uh, as we've had a long standing experience on the INUS program, this will be a very important source for the design of the future actions. Next slide, please. 
So talking about results, um, we are trying to publish on a, a yearly basis a report about Dino SIP1 actions. Um, this is a, a very good document to read because you can see there which are the sectors which are supported. You have many details about the different projects, uh, past, uh, running and future. Uh, lots of uh, uh, figures and in the latest edition this was a real added value we have also provided a, a rather long list of success stories which are providing concrete illustrations about uh, the results of this action then we have uh, the studies study on the effectiveness of innovation support for smes in europe a very uh, heavy publication that we have published in march uh, which had been realized by an external contractor. It's an excellent report. This report is uh, done like every 10 years by the Commission. So uh, it's a really an important report and it's of good quality with also lots of figures. So I can only invite you to have a look at it. And we've published recently uh, an overview of innocent projects in the area of blockchains. This is not, interesting, it's not only interesting for the, for the projects themselves, but also for all what is behind blockchains. We made an, uh, a very good summary of uh, what it is, blockchain entails also for business. So I can only recommend you to read this. It's a rather uh, short publication. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Coming up, um, we are now working on the uh, Handbook of Service Design of Innovation Agencies. This is building on the results of a high number of InnoSub5 actions, peer learning of innovation agencies. So this uh, um, doc document is an uh, in-house uh, uh, production and uh, should be released in the course of the month. Hopefully this is now on my desk, so I just need to have, to have the time to read it. So it should be done in the coming weeks. Uh, and we also will get a, a report from uh, precisely this action of InnoSub6 testing the, the RCT in innovation agencies. Uh, so this is the first report, uh, which will be rather short because uh, we don't have so many results uh, uh, yet. But of course, we're happy to count the ones of this one uh, in the report. Um, then uh, we are also working on a, a study which is uh, done by external experts in the area of SME segmentation. It sounds a little bit complicated, but it's basically how to best identify um, uh, and to target the right companies for providing innovation support and how to adapt it. Next slide, please. So now if I talk about founding opportunities, next slide, please. Uh, I won't go now into the detail of this, uh, uh, let's say rather heavy slide. So this is the uh, uh, European Innovation Ecosystems work program. This is where uh, uh, the, the, the legal basis for providing the funds is, is, uh, is recorded. Um, so you can see here, you have an overview uh, of these uh, actions for the next year. Uh, and we have now a number of actions which are open, which are on the next slide, please. Uh, you see here uh, the open slides, uh, the open calls for the moment. Um, and uh, if you have just a quick uh, glance at it, so you see here this uh, preparatory action for setting up joint programs I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, we have an action related to uh, building capabilities in innovation procurement. It's also a very important subject for innovation. If you consider that 15% uh, of the GDP is um, um, spent by public procurement. And then uh, we are working on the uh, uh, connection of ecosystems. On one hand, the acceleration. On the other hand, the deep tech. And uh, then we have one, the exception about uh, us granting directly also SMEs, which is Women Tech EU, which is addressing the role of women in deep tech industries. Um, and the last call is, I would say, a rather close story because this is for finding, for founding the Eurostars uh, program. And um, we have had a, an info day on the 22nd of September and you can find uh, the recordings online uh, and you will see here uh, all the members of uh, the great team dealing with this on the commission side. Next slide, please. I'm also very pleased to announce that on the COSME side, uh, a, uh, the first call of the Joint Cluster Initiative has been uh, published uh, quite recently. Uh, so uh, don't hesitate to have a look at it and to share this with uh, uh, your constituencies. 
Next slide, please. And that's it. So uh, I hope that uh, this provided you an interesting insight. And uh, I'm uh, happy to uh, take a couple of questions if there are any around. Daniel, thank you very much for that talk. Uh, I find it interesting, fascinating always to, to see the discussion at a higher level in the European Union. Maybe, I, maybe it's a common experience of some of the other people uh, here in this um, conference that usually we're working on the ground. We're working with our partners. We're working, I'm working in Estonia with Technopol. We're, we're doing events. We're doing projects. And that's a very, as you said, a very regional thing, a very local thing. And then I'm always fascinated and I have overwhelmed whenever I see the big European picture. I think sometimes we don't see the machinery that is is going to to make this this union work. So I find it fascinating um, doesn't seem like anyone's got any questions in the chat there, but that's fine. I'm sure they're processing everything that they're seeing. So, all right. Anyway, I guess we'll leave it there. So, Daniel, thank you very much for your talk today. Thanks to you. And let me just highlight that, of course, yes. without you, we couldn't do anything here at, at, at a European level. So it's really super important to have good players around in the ecosystems and that you have all the means for delivering a good job because you're playing an essential role in uh, the uh, growth of European economy. So thanks a lot for, for, for your work. And uh, without you, we couldn't do anything here. So again, thanks a lot. And we are totally relying on you for the overall results we can achieve at European level. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. That's, that's nice. And it's a great point. It's, it's really about what happens on the ground. It's really about the people actually the projects at the European Union there is to support, to make things happen at a higher level so we can get on the ground and do it.